Hey guys, Brad Holloway here, and welcome back to another video. In today's video, I'm actually going to be teaching you guys how to make a data pack using the data pack template on my website. Data packs are initially a vanilla type of way to modify your Minecraft world in a bunch of different ways. So, we want to start off at my YouTube video here. So, you, this is the video you're watching, as you can see. So, if you go and you scroll on down, you can actually see here on the there's a download link down here. Now, it may look slightly different to you guys. This, of course, isn't the actual video, but you can see there is a download link in the description of the video. If you go ahead and you navigate your way to that download link, you can actually see that it brings you to my website. Now, on my website, there is a data pack template that you can download right here. Go ahead and click the download button and it will download it to your computer. Now, you need to navigate your way to the download template or you can just click it right here and it'll open it depending on what browser you're using. We're just gonna go ahead and open it up you will see something like this. Now inside of here, you can see the data, the packed MC meta and the packed PNG. We're not gonna touch any of this inside the zip folder, of course, cause that's just, you know, crap. We're going to instead navigate our way to our Minecraft world. Now, if you guys don't know how to do this, hold down windows R, this will open up your run directory here where you can type in percent app data, percent and press enter. It will bring you to your app data roaming folder where you can then see your .minecraft folder, navigate into your .minecraft folder, into your saves folder, and into whatever world folder that you want to use. So in this case, we're using my data pack template showcase world. Then you need to open up your data packs folder and just go ahead and make a new folder in here named whatever you want. So we're just gonna go ahead and name this test. Open up your test folder and all of the things within your .zip here can be copied. Right click and copy files to clipboard or you can hold down control C alternatively. Paste these into here by right clicking and pressing paste or you can press control V. You There is a readme.md within this data pack right here. We can actually remove this if you want or you can modify it to say whatever you want it to say. Here is the pack.mc meta. This is initially what defines what Minecraft version you're going to be making the data pack on. Data pack pack formats are actually one version above every single version you're on. Meaning if you're making a data pack on 1.19, the pack format will need to be 10. If you're making a data pack on 1.18, the pack format will need to be nine. In this situation, we're making a 1.19 data pack. So we're gonna go ahead and format it as 10. You can change the description to whatever you want. In this case, we'll leave it the same. Now, if we navigate our way into our data pack here, into our data folder, you can see we got a Minecraft folder and a namespace folder. This namespace folder can be modified to be named whatever you want. So we're just gonna go ahead and name it test make sure there is no spaces and no capitalization within this folder name if you put capitalization or spaces it will not work now we're going to go ahead and look at our minecraft folder here open up your minecraft folder you see there's a tags folder within that tags folder there's a functions folder and within the functions folder there is a load.json and a tick.json if you go ahead and open these up you can see that it looks like this just a small little bit of code right here it just says namespace and reload namespace was the initial name of our folder right here that we named test. So whatever you renamed this other folder to, you need to change namespace to say. So I changed mine to test. You can go ahead and change yours to whatever you named yours. I'm gonna change mine to test. And you need to do this in both the tick and load.json files. We can go ahead and close these up. And we're gonna open up our test folder here. And inside the test folder, you can see we have a functions folder. Open up the functions folder. You can see we got a reload and tick.mc function, not .json, .mc function here. The reload.mc function file runs every single time the world is loaded or the command slash reload is ran. The tick.mc function file runs every single time the game ticks. And within these files, there is absolutely nothing. This is good because it leaves us a space for you guys to make whatever you want. And it leaves me space to show you guys how it works. So like I said, in the reload.mc function file, we can write whatever we want. This runs every time the world is loaded or the slash reload command is ran. Now, if you want to run one of these functions without one of these two conditions, you can actually type in slash function where it will then have your function here. Now this is on our world, but we haven't ran the slash reload command yet. So let's go ahead and run that. It'll then register in our functions to the game. Like so you got test reload and test tick. Like I said, these can be ran at any time. This ran whenever we ran that slash reload command, but because it's empty, you didn't see any changes to the game. Let's go ahead and prove that this runs every single time you run slash reloads. Let's go ahead and type in say subscribe. There we go. If we slash reload the game again, you can see it says subscribe in the chat now. These are both run off of Minecraft commands. Any command that you put in here will be ran. They run from top to bottom. So that means if you want a command, to, these commands to run in a certain order, they will all run in one tick, which is instant. If you want these to all run in a certain order, you just put them on a different hierarchy. The top ones run first and these, the bottom ones run last. If we can go ahead and make it say, please underneath, because subscribe is ran on top of please whenever we run the slash reload command, 
please will be put under subscribe. If we go to our tick.mc function file here, you can actually see this is the one that runs every single tick. So let's say you want something to happen every single tick of the game. For example, let's just go ahead and make it say lol every single tick in the game. So let's just go ahead and make it say lol every single tick. And you can see it didn't happen immediately. Now the reason this is because the, in order for any changes in your data pack to be made, you need to run the slash reload command. Slash reload here. You can see our chat is now spammed with lols and we can't do anything about it. If we try to type anything into chat, you can see it just takes over with lols. So, like I said, that's not the most efficient way to use this command. I'm just going to play around with this for a minute. Let's just effect give at e, which is all entities. We're just going to go ahead and make it give every single entity in the game levitation, for example. We can type in one second because ticks are faster than seconds. And we can type in the amplifier. We're just going to do one. And now whenever we slash reload the game, every single tick in the game, it will give us levitation. Now for the last type of .mc function file, I want to actually demonstrate the fact you can use subfolders within your data packs functions file. Within the functions folder, you can actually create any type of folder you want. We're going to go ahead and name this one bruh, 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 yep, like that. And then inside that bruh folder, you can actually make any type of function you want. So let's just go ahead and say test.mc function here, like that. And within the .mc function, it's the exact same as reload and tick.mc function. You can put any commands you want here that will run from top to bottom. So let's go ahead and run a command in here. Let's just go ahead and make it, let's just make it give the player that runs it darkness, for example. Now, if we go ahead and we slash reload the game, if we go ahead and do slash function, you can see it actually says bruh slash test. It opens as though it's a directory. If we go ahead and we click on this, you can actually see it says functions slash bruh and then this is slash test. You can actually put any of these types of functions inside of here with the other functions as well. Now, if you do this, it actually means that whenever you run the slash function command, you can actually see that it shows them inside the same folder as the reload and tick functions. Basically, you can just organize your files this way. It makes it a lot easier than just clicking through these right here where you can't read them exactly. So we're gonna go ahead and run the test command and just see what it does. There is our darkness filter here. Kind of scary looking when you think about it. That is how you make a data pack in vanilla Minecraft 1.19. You can also use this for any other version, I believe 1.13 and up. If you enjoyed the video, please be sure to leave a like and subscribe, and I will see you in the next one. Goodbye!